coming up next on Making Moves. The competition was fierce as JTA's best drivers and mechanics compete head-to-head -head for a chance to go to the State Bus Rodeo Championships in Orlando. These professionals are competing today for awards, for bragging rights, and to showcase their unique and awesome talents. These three ladies in JTA's maintenance division accomplished something never before done at the JTA. Find out just how they made history and what it means for the future of the authority. I would love for other ladies to come for it and be like, wow, you know, they have such a good support team there that I'd like to try that. San Pablo Road is notorious for rush hour backups. Find out how JTA is working to make traffic congestion there a thing of the past. San Pablo Road is a particularly difficult roadway to build and construct and widen because of uh, the community having so, such a high density of residential community around here, as well as two schools. The St. John's River Ferry Service is suspended until early May. We go behind the scenes to see what's keeping the boat out of the water. These stories and more are all coming up right now on an all new Making Moves. Hello and welcome to Making Moves. I'm Bill Milnes. Glad to have you with us today. We begin in La Villa, where history was made when JTA bus operators and mechanics put on a competition for the ages with a trip to Orlando and the Florida State Bus Rodeo Championships in the balance. Good luck to all of the participants. Good luck to you. The competition began with some encouraging words from CEO Nat Four. Then, after all 12 drivers inspected the 10 obstacle course, 11 time rodeo champion Ramon Farfan was the first up to the starting line. All right, big round of applause for Ramon, he's underway. To win the title again, Farfan would have to take down former nine time champ Dennis Collins and 10 other drivers, all eager to make a mark for themselves. Beating Farfan, who's also a four time state champ, and who won the international competition back in 2012, would certainly do that. Collins and Farfan are friendly rivals who encourage each other leading up to the rodeo event. And during the practice sessions, you can usually find them giving tips to the new drivers in the competition on how to best navigate the course. Most spectators expected Farfan to have his usual near-perfect outing, but during his run, he opened the door with a couple uncharacteristic mistakes. Now he would be forced to watch as one after another, the next 11 operators would come for his title. In the maintenance competition, six teams of technicians, the largest in recent years, would have to troubleshoot, diagnose and correct or report malfunctions on multiple bus components including engines, air brakes, air conditioning, and a written test. Two teams, the Expendables and the Three Amigos, would dominate the competition just as they did the previous year. But who would take the crown? Those results a little later. While the bus rodeo competition goes on for several hours, it's not all buses and engines. The family-friendly atmosphere is one of enthusiasm and fun with everything from music, dancing, games, photo booths, a barbecue contest, even popcorn. This is how we do it. After the last malfunction was fixed and the final bus operator had passed through the orange barrels, it was time to find out which maintenance team would go home with one of these cool looking trophies. After announcing the winners of the six individual events, it was time for CEO Nat Ford to name the overall winning team for 2023. Without further ado, it's the Three Amigos. Congratulations, Three Amigos. Richard Ballard, Mike Piscanic, and Tommy Cruz. Congratulations. Then it was the driver's turn. Would Ramon Farfan continue his historic run and win his 12th Jacksonville Bus Rodeo driving competition? 
or would a new driver break the streak and make their own history? And still, still champion, Ramon Fairfine. Ramon. And there it is, another year, another record win for Ramon Farfan, the winningest driver in Jacksonville Transportation Authority history. With their wins, Farfan and the three amigos now move on to Orlando in the state Florida Triple Crown Bus Rodeo. The last time these four all competed in the state rodeo championship back in 2019, they dominated, becoming state grand champions. Here's hoping history repeats itself. We'll have those results on our next show. The Three Amigos performance was certainly impressive. They were pushed hard by last year's champs, the Expendables. Let's bring in Making Moves senior correspondent Eugene Lindsay now. Eugene, the Three Amigos now going for another state championship. That will be historic. But you were following another team in the competition that was also doing something never before done in the Jacksonville Bus Rodeo. Yes, that's right, Bill. As you know, March was Women's History Month. It's a time to reflect on all the accomplishments and contributions that women have achieved in a multitude of areas. Well, this year during Women's History Month, a group of women right here at the JTA were busy making history as well. Hi, I'm Latoya McQueen. Hi, I'm Desiree Arnold. Hi, I'm Vonda Humphreys. And, and we, we are, are Team Triple, Triple Threat. Threat. LaToya, Desiree, and Zavanna have a combined total of over two decades of employment at the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. And they say they're ready to take on a new challenge at the JTA. For more than 45 years now, the JTA has held its annual bus operator and mechanics rodeo competition. That's where bus drivers and maintenance workers put their skills to the test. And until now, there has never been a female to compete in the mechanical portion of the event. I want to participate in the rodeo this year because they've never had females in it. So Desiree approached I veteran JTA they mechanic Engelmar Coney about her third. idea of putting together a female team to compete in this year's yeah, maintenance rodeo. And he said, OK, you find two more ladies and I'll go to management for you. So I found these, I found McQueen and Vonna and they agreed. So Mr. Coney made a pitch to management and put the wheels in motion for Team Triple Threat to make history at the JTA with its first ever female team to compete in their annual maintenance rodeo competition. And I'm thinking, I'm like, well, you know, this will be a first time that we actually have had females to do something like this. And I always thought, I said, you know, I'm sure if us men folks can do it, they can do it also as well, you know. And so I said, why not give them opportunity? And to make this first time endeavor even more challenging for the ladies of Team Triple Threat, none of them have ever worked as a mechanic or in maintenance before. But to show you just how serious and committed they are about competing in this year's maintenance rodeo, they studied and practiced every day for six weeks leading up to the big event. I'll start the time when the last member of the team enters the bus, and then aside for the inputs and outputs, defects can be mechanical or electrical in nature. Ten minute time limit, please, please proceed to the door. And with that, the first challenge for Team Triple Threat was underway. CB 51, D2 I5. The spy feels bad. Feels bad? Yeah. Remember, 30 seconds, shut it down. No light. No light? No light. Shut down, kill the light. Just like that. So the first competition under your belt now, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. We feel great. We feel great. <laughs> that was the hardest one, so we good. Intense. Ooh. Intense. My teammates were great. Toya with the diagrams, reading them off, giving the feedback, and of course, Desiree with the assist. What do you need? What do you need? It was great. It was a rush. And with round one now under their belts, Team Triple Threats continued on, putting their skills to the test in four other challenges. Ready, set, and go. These ladies say that while they may be the first group of females to compete in the maintenance rodeo competition, they certainly won't be the last. Clear, clear. 
and hopes that their presence here will inspire other young ladies to pursue careers and opportunities that are traditionally held by men. The average young child would think that only men can work mm -hmm. on a bus. Right. But then they see us troubleshooting, figuring it out. Oh, oh, that's not just a man's job. I think I might want to try that. I might want to go work for JTA. Just opening doors for younger women to say that, okay, I can have a career here at JTA. I can work as a mechanic. I would love for other ladies to come for it and be like, wow, you know, they have such a good support team there that I like to try that, you know? One minute. Clear, clear, clear. 30 seconds, ladies. Okay, let's do a final start. Clear. Wow, what an impressive trio. And as I mentioned, these ladies are not mechanics by trade, so they don't do this kind of work every day. They all work in the utilities department at JTA. And Bill, while the ladies of Team Triple Threat indeed made history by being the first all-female group to ever compete in the maintenance portion of the rodeo, they tell me they are very appreciative for the encouragement and the support of the men in the maintenance department. They say during their weeks of studying and training, preparing for the event, many of the guys were there to answer questions and even coach them on what to look for in each of the challenges. The environment, they say, was very welcoming, and they really appreciate all of the support. Hugh Jiwen, CEO Nat Ford announced the ladies of Triple Threat won the first ever Maintenance Rookie of the Year award. The place just erupted in cheers and applause. They certainly had some support. They certainly did, Bill. It wasn't a first place award, but it was indeed a momentous occasion, not only for them, but for the entire JTA family. Bill. Eugene Lindsay, thank you very much. Meanwhile, JTA's legendary driving champion, Ramon Farfan, will have to contend with another history-making female if he is to win his fifth state rodeo championship. Miami-Dade transit bus operator Talisa Ruan is the first woman ever to win first place overall in the Miami-Dade bus rodeo. Girl power all over the place at the 2023 bus rodeos here in Florida. Still to come on this edition of Making Moves. We head to San Pablo Road to get an update on the road expansion project going on there. So we're installing these drainage structures to be able to get our temporary widening completed. That way we can build the west side of the roadway. The St. John's River Ferry Service is suspended until early May. We'll take you behind the scenes to show you what's keeping the boat out of the water. ...for their achievements in transportation. Those stories when we come back. You're watching Making Moves, honored by the American Public Transportation Association with its 2022 First Place Ad Wheel Award for Excellence in Electronic Media. Welcome back to Making Moves. Let's head east now to San Pablo Road, where one of JTA's final Mobility Works projects is underway. If you live or travel on the two-lane road, you know how traffic can quickly back up waiting for cars to turn in and out of the many housing developments there. And while it may look like the project is at a standstill, JTA officials say the work currently being done is critical to the overall project. This is San Pablo Road, a two-lane roadway in the intercoastal west section of Jacksonville. San Pablo is almost exclusively residential, with single-family housing developments lining both the east and west side of the roadway. It's also one of the two remaining projects in JTA's Mobility Works program. The JTA Mobility Works program's main purpose is to increase safety on our roadways as well as increase connectivity to other modes of transportation like adding sidewalks and bike lanes for cyclists and also joggers and and pedestrians. The plan calls for JTA to expand the roadway by adding a continuous turn lane between Beach and Atlantic Boulevards. JTA also plans to add new curb, gutter, sidewalks, and bike lanes with the primary goal of making San Pablo Road safer. The existing San Pablo Roadway is a rural roadway section with open ditches, so by way of introducing curb and gutter to the, to the roadway, it makes it safer, you know, there's less roadside hazards as a result. 
Also, we're including bike lanes and increased pedestrian safety, like uh, pedestrian crossings and things like that to keep our children safe going to school, as well as uh, patrons that are out trying to exercise in the community. Julian McKinley, JTA's program manager for quality assurance on the San Pablo project, says much of the current work is being focused not on the road itself, but underneath and on a nearby private road where a new drainage pond is being constructed to treat runoff water before it gets discharged into the St. Johns River. So we're installing these drainage structures to be able to get our temporary widening completed. That way we can build the west side of the roadway. McKinley says the housing density here makes for a more challenging job especially now in the early stages of a project. Well, San Pablo Road is a particularly difficult roadway to build and construct and widen because of the community having so, such a high density of residential community around here, as well as two schools. So accommodating the traffic as well as you know the construction phasing has been difficult, but also when you're at the beginning stages of a project, you have so much underground facilities to construct in terms of drainage, culverts, side drains, and different things like that, as well as the installation of JEA water main and the existing utilities that are underground that are difficult to work around. One thing is certain with the San Pablo Road project, when it's completed, whether you're in your car, on a bicycle, or taking a walk on the new sidewalks, you will never be safer. And with the new turning lane allowing cars to queue out of the main traffic lanes, traffic congestion will be significantly reduced. The JTA Board of Directors has elected new officers. After two years as its chair, Ari Jolly passed the gavel to longtime Jacksonville banker Debbie Buckland. Attorney Ray Driver was named new vice chair. Abel Harding is the new secretary and Andre Wallace the new board treasurer. Jolly, Stephanie Birch, and FDOT District 2 Secretary Greg Evans round out the seven-member board. Now a look at the St. John's River Ferry as you've likely never seen it before. The ferry is currently in dry dock at BAE on Hexer Drive undergoing its triannual rehab. The haul-out is mandated by the U.S. Coast Guard to ensure the vessel is maintained in top condition. These images were taken by Making Moves Chief Photographer Jeffrey Leeser. You can see that every portion of the boat is undergoing some sort of rehabilitation. All of the engines and valves are checked and the ferry's deck is refurbished and the entire exterior of the boat will be repainted. Ferry service is expected to resume on May 2nd. Still to come, two members of JTA's leadership team were recently recognized for their achievements in transportation. We'll have that story next when Making Moves continues. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. And in our family, we're used to getting involved, and I encourage you to do the same, especially when it comes to caring for your loved ones. When I think about Alzheimer's and the impact it had on my family, I recognize that losing a race isn't such a bad day after all. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough, but if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Can't believe you're doing this alone. I've done it before. I remember you threw your back out. <laughs> How you holding up? Hand me that board. Nothing wrong with getting help. I'm good. I did it when Felicia left. I'll figure it out. I know you will, but you don't have to do it alone. That's all I'm saying. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. It can be a real pain sometimes, you know what? Mm -hmm. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. It's important to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall. 
but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Jacksonville is a slower pace here, a place where you can raise kids in a nice environment, quiet, and slow pace. And there's a lot of activities for kids to do out here and adults. Southern hospitality is, is definitely a real thing here. It is common for passengers to get on the bus and say good morning to everyone, and everyone would say good morning back. This is definitely a community service type of job. There's so many people that depend on JTA as their only mode of transportation, or even a more convenient mode of transportation. It makes you feel good knowing that I'm helping somebody each and every day. I came to JTA actually looking for a, a better job, better pay. I had three daughters. I was basically a single mom. Oh, it had good benefits, good pay, flexible hours. Driving is a passion of mine. I'm happy that I made the choice to become a JTA operator. Customer service is my thing, and I get to drive at the same time. That's right up my alley. done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. You're watching Making Moves, the most honored transportation news and information program of its kind in the country. Welcome back to Making Moves. Two members of JTA's leadership team were recently recognized for their achievements. Chief of Staff Ivan Rodriguez has been elected to the Latinos in Transit Board of Directors. LIT, as it's called, was created to promote the advancement and development of Latinos and other minorities in transportation. Rodriguez has been with JTA since 2013. He was named JTA Chief of Staff last year. JTA CEO Nat Ford said this about Rodriguez's appointment to the National Board. With his participation, JTA will now be part of an organization that has a clear vision of pushing for sustainable and equitable mobility services while creating a network to advance professionals. And JTA's AVP of Safety and Security, Chris Jirasi, was recently recognized for passing the Certified Protection Professional Exam. It's the highest professional certification in security management. The CCP is considered the gold standard in the security business. Jirasi is one of only 15 CCPs in Jacksonville and one of less than 4,000 nationwide. Congratulations to both Ivan Rodriguez and Chris Jirasi for their achievements. And that wraps up this edition of Making Moves. We thank you for joining us, and we hope you tune in again soon as we continue to bring you the latest in transportation news, economic development, and all things JTA. If you want to watch any of our shows again or catch up on ones you may have missed, we welcome you to check out our YouTube channel. A direct link to the YouTube page is available at jtafla.com, and just click on the icon at the bottom of the page. I'm Bill Milnes. For everyone here at Making Moves, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody.